Hey guys, welcome to another tutorial for Hacking Fever. Today I'm going to be uh, doing a short series about Game Maker. Uh, so what Game Maker is, is like how to create your own computer games for the computer, of course. And uh, during the series, I'm going to be having a friend of mine who's going to be asking questions along the way. He, yep, yep. That'd be him. He knows almost nothing about Game Maker. He barely even knows how to start it up. So first what you're going to need to do is just watch my other video about how to download it and possibly register it. So after you get that started, it doesn't matter if you have the light version for this video. Alright, so, when you start it up, you should, oh sorry, I gotta click out of that. So when you use, just ignore what I'm doing here. Alright, so when you start it up, you'll get uh, this screen. So first what you need to do is create your character, like his picture. So right click on sprites, that's all the pictures in the game, and say create sprite. You don't have to change the name, but, um... Uh, I recommend you do, but for the sake of this video, I'm not going to. So let's edit the sprite. See that edit button? Does that mean you're going to make it your own character? Yes. And then, so once you edit it, just double click on the first image you see, and you get this green screen. Treat green as pretty much invisible, because any color in. How do you make it bigger? Uh, to make it bigger, you just press the zoom in and zoom out buttons. But it's just gonna stay small for now. I'm not gonna make a big object. So uh, first, let's make a circle by selecting Circle Tab. I'm just gonna make a face for th this video. So there's a circle and then a line. And let's just say two eyes. Be good. Okay. Just make it a little nicer. Okay, so that's uh, that's gonna be our character. Just click OK to that, and everything, it sets itself to be good, except for this. You have to click the center button. This... What does that do? This makes it so that everything that comes out of it, like if you create a bullet, if you don't add any extra uh, values to it, it's just going to come straight out of the center. But normally it would be in the top left corner, and that look kind of retarded. So that's going to be its new center. Just click OK. And then we need to give like some uh, codes to it, I guess. There's what does that do? This makes it so that way we can move the character around uh, our level. So first, create a new object. And then when you create a new object, you get a screen like this. Just click on this button, and you'll see all the sprites you've made. Just click on the first sprite, get. Click down here and say add event. Now we're going to click on a keyboard event. What's a keyboard event? It's an event that pretty much means it'll start doing something when you, uh, while the button's pressed, and then when it gets released, it'll stop doing whatever it's doing. So let's just press the left button. Oh yeah, before we do this, let's make sure this is solid. So this object is solid. Now, normally, uh, if you just start out, I'll, uh, you'll usually use this move fixed thing, which makes it so you can just move it in a normal direction every time you press it. But this d will let you just go straight through the uh, walls, which would not be good. So we're going to go to this control tab, and in this question, it will check if a box is empty. And since negative 4, let's just say we want to move negative 5 uh, pixels every step. Now a step is uh, could depend on anything based on the level. I'll explain that in more depth later. So make it so it's only solid, and make sure it's a relative to its object. So just click check the relative box. So Does that mean it'll interact with objects in the level? No, that means it'll interact. This uh, code interacts with itself. So, uh, like it'll check if five negative five degrees x, not five degrees, negative five pixels um, left is open. Five pixels left is open. And if it is, it'll do what we're about to tell it to do. We're going to tell it to jump to position negative 5, because that's what I was just checking to see if it was empty. Relative. Okay. So now let's add another event. And let's make the right. The right is almost the exact uh, same, except opposite x values. So instead of negative 5, let's just use 5. Make sure it's relative. Got to make sure it's relative, else these will not work. So five again. Relative again. 
So now we got a character that can move back and forth. Now let's make it move up and down. So up key, um, control. And now the X, the Y's are opposite of what you think they would be. Don't ask me why. So if you want to go up, that means you have to go negative five. It's kind of confusing. Why are you doing Y now instead of X? Because the Y axis, if you know what graphs are, that means it's the vertical axis. And I'm pretty sure my friend knows, it's just he's not very smart. So just make it so it's negative five degrees Y. And then jump again to negative five degrees Y. Just check. Okay. And then let's just make a down key. So this time five degrees because we're going down. Because remember it's the opposite of what a normal graph would be like. Okay, so check to that position is collision free. Oh my friend has a question. If you did something like ten, would that mean that when you push right or left or up or down your character would move further? Yes, it would move faster and further. So uh you can just change the speed to whatever you want, but you gotta make sure that the checking is the same as the jump or else it'll be able to go through objects and that would not be good so uh... we just gotta set this y to five again so jumps five down relative position so relative okay so now we got the character but we don't have any boundaries for him so we gotta make just a nice wall and now for the wall deselect transparent because it'll make the bottom left corner uh, and the color in that pixel square makes it invisible. So deselect that. Oh, forgot I gotta edit it. So you just get this green box. And so pretty much you're. Uh, Alright. We have to go to there. And then click. Yes. There we go. We got the green box. Center it. Okay. So now you got that wall. And then you just need to create it as an object. You don't need to add any events for it. Because the person already knows what to do when it collides with this solid object so, okay running out of time here so I'm gonna try to speed it up now I just create a room a room is the actual level your characters will interact in characters or walls or whatever so first let's just add the character uh, so it's just our smiley face I'll, you select it so I, I'll turn off the graph that's all it looks like and let's just make uh, a couple of walls here he does go straight out of the screen, just a little warning, so you might want to just make boxes all around him. Just put it down over here. And that's good for this. How do you add the boxes in? You have to left click in the graph and it'll add, or if you right click, it'll delete. Right click. And there we go. So just click the check mark button. It's tested out by clicking this run the game. And it does close out of the screen. Do not panic because as soon as you close out of this game, your game maker will pop back up. So we got our game here. It's a little bit laggy because of uh, the video. Sorry about that. Nothing I can do. See, I'm just holding the left key and he stops there. He stops and tries to go up. And when he goes this wall, he'll stop and try to go right, like that. But he does go straight out of the screen, so that's why you want to make your own boundaries. And he can come right back in. So yeah, that's the basic tutorial. I'll have more videos up soon, so just stay tuned.